you still want to <laughs> Evening, ain't out. Oh, yeah. We're streaming. Here, okay, for return. Good evening, everybody. Let's well, make a start if that's okay. Good evening. Warm welcome to LWC. Uh, meet the Tutor evening for 4 4. I think I know most people here now, but if you don't, my name's Gareth Pierce. I'm the senior deputy head here. Standing in for Adam, who's away enjoying himself at the Headmasters Conference for three days, um, I think up somewhere up in Oxford. So he would be here talking to you normally, but he's away at the moment. We're going to talk together for a while. I've got Helena here, who's going to rip, a fifth former, she's going to talk to us about some lessons learned about how to make the most of 4 form. We've also got Joe Allen here, who's a prefect in charge of 4 form, to share with you what some of the messages he gave um, to your children at a recent assembly. And we've also got Jonathan Turney here, who's head of Fourth Form. We'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the academic things and matters as well. We're actually getting live streamed at the moment. This is getting live via YouTube for any international pupils who aren't able to be here today. So if you're wondering what that's for, that's what it's there for. Uh, I'm just going to start by reminding you a little bit about the systems at LWC and, 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 and who to talk to if you have any worries or concerns in no particular order. We've still got Matron, good old Matron in the boarding houses. Um, a tower of strength for your kids. Um, a shoulder to cry on, somebody to turn to. Uh, and they're also the person to turn to with any domestic issues, worries or concerns, lost kit, um, things like that. A really important person in the lives of our young children, without a shadow of a doubt. Of course we've got house parents. Um, they will see the children right through that five-year journey, turning up in the boarding house at 13, waving them farewell as hopefully 18-year-olds as they leave the upper sixth form. Again, a really important relationship um, and something that you must feel able to talk openly with. We've got the head of year now. It's a new post this year um, in all year groups. The head of year is there to do a lot of tracking and monitoring. Uh, is, is somebody Jonathan is someone you can approach, but he's primarily there to make sure the right information is given to the right member of staff to get the support in place for the child. So it's much more of an internal thing. I would recommend to you that the main people that you talk to if you have a worry in the first instance is matron, house parent, and then coming finally to the tutor. The tutor is the right hand person to your pupil over the next two years. The tutor does stay with them in the fourth form and stay with them right into the fifth form uh, as they take their GCSEs. They don't change at the end of the fourth year for obvious reasons. That um, continuity is so important as they do their GCSEs. It's such an important relation to get right. The tutor, the tutee, and you. The more open, candid, um, that relationship can be the better and the next year is quite a challenging one if I'm honest with you. Can I do a quick show of hands? Who's had an older child who's been a fourth former before? Just a quick show of hands. Okay thank you. And hands up if you haven't. If you've got your oldest child is hitting the fourth form. Right okay it's about 50-50-ish. Fourth form's quite tricky. It's a tricky year. It's right in the middle of puberty. Girls start liking boys, boys start liking girls. Girls start falling out a little bit. Um, and I am quite busy with fourth form as dealing with friendship issues. Um, boys haven't quite grown up enough sometimes to realise that this year is really important and GCSEs are just over a year away. They just need a bit of a wake up call sometimes. So fourth form, year 10 is a tricky year. And it's this year more than any, any other, I would argue, that that relationship between parents and the tutor is at its strongest. 
because they will frustrate us this year. They'll frustrate, frustrate you at home at times, and they will frustrate us teachers at school. And we need to be able to pick up the phone to one another and just talk and, and stay wherever possible on the same page, facing the same problem, and to see them through it. And sometimes it's not a quick fix. Sorting out a fourth form girl friendship issue is not something we can fix in a couple of days. It takes sometimes weeks or even months to get it teased through. So we've got to really work together uh, with that. And tonight is the chance for you to start that, get to know the tutor and start talking. I'm going to just share, if, if I may, now I've, I've, I've got you all here, just to share some of the things we are, some of the challenges we're facing that I'd like to uh, recruit your support with, if I may. Number one, uh, sleep. Sleep for 14 and 15 year olds is so important. They need nine hours sleep a night to really function and learn at their most effective. And many of our 14 and 15 are pushing that. They're trying to stay up later and they quite like looking at screens late at night. And that does not help them get to sleep and get quality sleep. So there's one challenge that we need to work on together, getting them to get that sleep. Social tensions I've mentioned. The other one is parties start to, to kind of ramp up a little bit this year. Um, some pupils, some, some of them start to want to try alcohol at party for the first time. I think collectively we need to control that a little bit <laughs> because what they'll do sometimes is they'll convince you that every party you know, finish at four in the morning, and the alcohol is freely available to everyone, and it's just you, Mum, it's just you, Dad, that's being a real party pooper. And it's not strictly true. They're just sort of doing a little bit of manipulation there, okay? So, so I'm going to say on, on behalf of all of us, really, let's not let four form party late. Um, if they're going to try a little bit of alcohol, that's parental decision, but just a little bit, please. Uh, supervise it very carefully because they will push the boundaries this year and if you push it this year they'll push it even more next so if you get it right this year next year will be better okay some of you are nodding like you've already some of our I'm split it a little bit some of our girls and boys spend hours on social media and it isn't always healthy they can be quite unpleasant sometimes and it can be an incredibly addictive thing, how many times I'm liked, what's going on, and if you take the phone off them, they're almost start, their eyes start twitching, you know, it really is like losing a limb, and it's something together, we've got to work on this, it's quite a challenge in schools at the moment with our young people, and I'd add to that gaming, it's slightly more with the boys than the girls, but some of our boys do get addicted to gaming, and can hemorrhage hours on these things, hours and hours. They're also talking to other people. We don't necessarily know, know who they are. So I'm wearing my kind of safeguarding hat on here as well. We all need to be quite vigilant to what they're playing and who they're playing it with. Okay, it is something, again, that's worrying us a little bit. <coughs> but that's enough from me, really. I, I'm going to hand over now to uh, Jonathan Jenny, the head of the air, to talk a little bit about the academic things. It's great to see you here this evening. And then we'll uh, have a little video. We'll hear from the, the young people here and then it's <coughs> to meet your tutors. Thank you. Okay, good evening. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Turney. I'm a biology teacher in the middle and senior school. And as of this year, I'm head of fourth form. My head of year role, as Mr. Pearson has mentioned, is primarily to provide an extra layer of academic support, although there will inevitably be an overlap with pastoral and behavioural issues. I may be assisted by excellent and experienced fourth form tutors and it is our collective responsibility to ensure that your sons and daughters successfully navigate their way through various highs and lows <coughs> by ahead. The fourth form is a critical year. Not only has the GCSE curriculum been started in all subjects, but typically somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of the teaching and therefore the learning is done over the next three terms. The foundation for success is laid this year, and those students who have a good fourth form invariably go on to do well at GCSE. This is made all the more challenging, 
as friendship dynamics and physical development provide an often unhelpful backdrop to the year. Under the reformed A-level curriculum, GCSE results will again form the foundation of our students' university applications. It is imperative that good work habits are cemented in this year and that high expectations are set for academic success. But so too is developing a healthy work-life balance, which includes taking full advantage of the co-curricular programme and building positive relationships with peers, parents and staff. It is also a time when many interests and hobbies are converted into lifelong pastimes. So it is important that these are appropriately nurtured whilst keeping an open mind to new ideas and opportunities. I wanted to briefly talk about two aspects of life in the fourth form this evening. The first is what we call Atoll, which as of Friday you'll now be familiar with. This is a new tracking system to monitor pupil progress. This will take the form of Attitude to Learning, Atoll, great, which will be reviewed by myself and tutors and published to the BLE every three weeks on a Friday evening. There will be no academic grade, just a number, from one to seven, <coughs> reflecting the pupils' attitude and approach to their studies and the routines and habits that we are seeking to embed. We believe that by encouraging and instilling these learning traits, the pupil is better prepared long term to cope with the challenges of the workplace. We believe that with the right attitude, approach, routines and habits, the all-important academic grades become a natural conclusion to this process. So if one is unsatisfactory and seven is exceptional, please do note that four is good. This means that the student is doing everything that is expected of them and being asked for by the teacher. Three simply means an improvement is required. Now that could be something as simple as punctuality to lessons, completing prep in full and on time, or having the right equipment for class, e.g. a calculator for science and maths. It could, however, be something more intrinsic, such as retaining focus in class, staying on task, contributing to discussion, or avoiding being distracted or distracting others. If a pupil does not know why they have scored less than four, then it is the responsibility of that pupil to politely inquire of their teacher what it is that they have to do or need to show in order to achieve that high grade. It is also worth stressing that three should be and will be a common grade that teachers will be awarding in raising expectations and academic standards at LWC. There is therefore no need to unduly worry should your son or daughter pick up one or two threes. Similarly, in stretching our more able students to five, six and potentially sevens, pupils should be looking to consistently produce written work of a very high standard, contribute fully in class, read beyond the syllabus, show initiative and from time to time take risks that will see them working outside of their learning comfort zone. With the help of the tutors we aim to track this data in order to support the learning of our pupils. Those receiving a high adult grade will be monitored to ensure that they are being stretched and appropriately extended in that particular subject. This is key to ensuring that these pupils fulfil their potential. Rewards will also be given to those who have achieved high adult grades and also, please note, to those who have made the most progress over that three-week period. For pupils who fall below expectations, a system of academic reports will be introduced, allowing tutors and myself to monitor the pupil in every lesson. Academic report lasts for two weeks within each three-week cycle, with a review with me at the end of the second week. Parents will receive an email from their child's tutor if we feel that academic report is needed tutors will comment on the report each day. Parents are invited to comment on their child's academic report on a daily basis and for boarders the house parents will fill in the parent comment. Please note that there are four stages of academic report with each stage involving a greater degree of monitoring. I've also been asked this evening to make a plug for something that's called SAM Learning which uh, many parents will be aware of already. Uh, it's an online resource available to all students and teachers and it's accessible anywhere at any time. Now to quote from their website, studies show that students achieve two GCSE grades on average better than expected with as little as 10 hours or more use of sound learning, <coughs> which is some statements. I've left some 
letters to this effect uh, with the tutors in the classrooms that you'll be breaking out into. So please do take a copy of that letter home uh, this evening. Secondly and finally, I just wanted to briefly mention about the tutor journal, which you may be familiar from last, last year. And we encourage our pupils to take ownership of their studies and use the tutor journal as a method of recording targets and reflecting upon them. Our theme for the fourth form this year is creativity, which can be extended beyond art, music, etc. And for example, pupils will be encouraged to think creatively when tackling problems. So the pupils meet with their tutor on a regular basis. Four lessons at 8.35, afternoon registration at 1.45, fortnightly in a tutorial session, and of course in-house in the evening when the tutor is on duty. There are therefore lots of opportunities for one-to-one -one coaching sessions, the outcome of which can be recorded in the tutor journal. There is also an Elevate seminar coming up on the 17th of October, where students will be introduced to ideas to help them with problem solving, improving learning, working with others, and exam preparation. <coughs> and again, for the record, that's a copy of the fourth form uh, tutor journal that I brought with me this evening. And as and when there's information tied to it, that's built up over the year. The tutor is the first point of contact, but please do not hesitate to contact me at any point during the year, either via email or by phone in the biology department. For learning support questions, please email Jane Turner or Margaret Elwood. The email address there is senco, S-E-N-C-O, at worldwantworth.org. Uh, finally, if I don't see you beforehand, I look forward to seeing many of you in about six weeks' time at the Fourth Form Parents' Evening on Thursday, the 17th of November. I would now like to show you a presentation which shows some of the many exciting opportunities available to our pupils at LWC.
to introduce you to Helena Radman, a current fifth former I'm Helena Adman and I'm currently in fifth form. Thinking back to when I started my own fourth form, I remember the biggest thing on my mind being I'm starting my GCSEs and the utter panic that caused. Now, at the beginning of fifth form, I can honestly say that I am no less nervous. <laughs> but I would like to share with you the advice that I would give anyone starting a fourth form year. Firstly, my main advice would be to not hold back on everything on offer here. One of the greatest features of LWC is the endless opportunities to try something new and different. In my case, I tried activities ranging from boxer size to Zumba, cooking to Chinese painting. Both these, um, as a psychopathic boy in Lord of the Flies and a dancer in Guys and Dolls, both these productions and activities pushed me out of my comfort zone, and I found that I surprised myself in what I was capable of, and it was one of the highlights of my year in football. Another moment was the first time I went flying. As you know, your children will have had the opportunity to choose between community service and in CCF there is RAF or Army. I chose RAF and since then I've been flying three times in a two-seater tutor plane where I've been able to talk to the pilot first hand, be given complete control of the aircraft, do flips myself and fly the plane over Stonehenge. <laughs> this was not only the highlight of that year but a highlight of my entire time at LWC and something I will never forget. Of course all the options are equally as good and many of my advice would be to encourage your children to get the most out of this experience. There was also the sport on offer here. I have never prided myself on being the best hockey or netball player, but I do consider myself as a team player, and that is what I've enjoyed the most and continue to love. As a firm member of the third team, I'm probably used to losing more of our games than winning them, um, but I look forward to every training session and to have the opportunity to play matches against other schools is great. In terms of work, it is of course the start of their GCSE year, but please encourage them to keep up with their activities because, as you've just heard, there are so many things for them to do that it would almost be a crime not to try some of them. Yes, this may make their lives that little bit busier, but it also forces them to become a whole lot more organised and responsible for themselves. Not only this, but I have learnt that being busy is not something to be afraid of, and I think the common saying, give work to a busy person, is true, as you learn how to manage your time and be more efficient. This is something that I learned in fourth form with the help of my tutor and the Elevate Talks that LWC provide, which were fantastic at showing me different ways to approach work and how to learn smarter, not harder. I also think, though, that's very important for them to strike a balance between their work and rest. LWC does place emphasis on trying new things, which is great, and what makes the school special. But equally, they shouldn't hesitate on perhaps going to a clinic on Saturday to get targeted help in a specific subject, or maybe asking for help from sick formers in-house. And it goes without saying that trying to create the best work habits at the beginning of their GCSE year will benefit them hugely and will set them up for the rest of their time at LWC and is something that I know now but wish I had known going into the fourth form. First being, I think, this year the importance of the attitude to their learning needs to be on point from the start. Uh, the majority of the course that they uh, will take their exam at the end of fifth form is done in fourth form. They, still, they will do some content that they probably won't come back to at the end of fifth form, so it's important that they get their work done and their lessons properly now. The second is that I think they need to build their habits correctly now. That may come into doing prep from seven till nine, they need to make sure that they're using that time effectively possibly going over their notes and thinking what they've actually learned and what they've actually learned and worked hard on in that time. Because it's important that they don't just spend their, that time lazing around in their prep rooms and um, just like talking to their mates. This is a really important time for them to um, kind of uh, uh, put back into what they've learned in the lesson to make sure that it's not just gone through their heads. And the final thing is that they need to make sure that they balance this with rest, as Helen has said. Um, it's not just a case of eat, sleep, study, repeat. They need to really make sure that they rest when they rest and work when they work. So from seven to nine, they work hard. But then after that, they get a chance to relax. They do what they want. They can um, talk to their friends and then get some good rest. That's probably one of the main things that I think helped me in my fourth form year is that you don't just 
bombard yourself with work, getting caught up in the fact that this is the start of GCSEs. This is the start of GCSEs, but it's mainly important that you get a good balance in your life of working and relaxing. Thank you very much. Any questions for either so, Helena, yeah. Joe, myself, or Mr. Turney before we go to tutors? A phrase you will hear by this: "Working smart," it's rather than "working harder." We, we do try to stop kids getting too anxious. One of the causes of anxiety is they just get obsessed with working harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. And that actually, that's not the answer. It's being efficient and effective with your time. So that working smart is something that I, we, we try to echo quite a lot. Well, I think you mentioned it. Can I just, can I just yeah. ask that if your students come home and they might have an issue that they kind of say, oh, I don't really want to go to my tutor about that, can you please encourage them to come to either me or Katie, as we should be one of their first port of calls this year? I think we want to really want to build a relationship with the fourth form prefects and the fourth form themselves. So if they feel there's an issue that they think, oh, I'm not sure I want to go to my tutor, or I'm not going to go to my teacher, please encourage them to come to me or Katie, because I think that's what we're here for, really. Good point, yes. Yes. Can I ask a question about the new Yes. yes. Um, you, when you were talking about you, you mentioned for the more able pupils, you know, the higher numbers. So I'm a little bit confused. Is it about an individual's attitude to learning regardless of their ability, or does it have a link to their ability? So I'll give you an example. If you've got a child who's really poor at maths, and you would never expect them to do academically well, but they're trying as hard as they possibly can, is there seeming can I, can I lead on that one? Is that alright? Um, I, th I think it was a, a slip of the tongue rather than... It's de definitely, it's all about the attitude to their learning. Um, and I think that's so important for lots of reasons. I think those of that find lessons tough, they put more effort in than anyone often. I teach bottom set fifth form and they work their backsides off sometimes and they should be able to get as high grade as any. But do you know what, the flip side is equally true. I sometimes worry about our very able kids because they can coast along and do fine, but that's not good enough. They learn, some, they learn the wrong lessons about life doing that. And I think it's really important that we're quite tough on our bright kids and, and are very demanding. So we'll, you know, bright kids might get threes. And they might think, well, hang on, I'm, I'm aiming for an eight, so why are you giving me three? Because you're capable of more than that. You know, and you can push them on. So they're all the grades are open to all. It is all about their attitude to, to their learning, their habits, the routines, the routines they develop, their self-discipline, etc. Um, yeah. So it's a good. I'm glad you asked the question. That's a and, really and, good and question. It's, you know, I'm pleased with that answer, but it will be interesting to see whether that's how it feels. Because at yeah. my daughter's last school, they had a similar thing with a and different they, scale, yeah. but it tended to be the bright kids always got the high numbers and the not so bright kids didn't because they mixed up ability and effort. And it's something we're going to watch out for because it's easy to slip into that I know yeah. but it's it, we mustn't do that it's about their attitude to their learning. Thank you. That's the measure. Um, any more questions? Yeah. Can you, uh, yes. can you tell me a bit about the elevator tools? I see them in the, what, what they are. From my experience, they, some people come in, they, they, their whole company is based on giving talks to the students our age and how they should go about their revision and their learning throughout their two years or their, through their, their A-levels. Yeah, basically that, and they have, they come in for talks and they usually, so they're quite young, aren't they? Yeah, they're young, so like they're, they're fresh, they're yeah. fresh out of university, so yeah. they, they know the courses they have. Tips on how to learn. Yeah, I'd very recommend them to listen to them and hear what they have to say, because... And they, does everyone have to go to them? Yeah. They they're young and cool, you see. So they they <laughs> say the same thing as us, but they're young and cool. So they, <laughs> suddenly the message gets listened to. <laughs> any, any more questions? Yeah. Well, obviously, the sleep aspect you'll know is important. Yeah. As two with two boys with full boarders. Yeah. How will the boarding house encourage that? Because if you if you've got people sharing rooms, it's obviously chat 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 chat. chat yeah, chat, generally. Chat. It is quite hard. My last job was running a boarding house, and it's a, it's a, it is a challenge. But uh, there is a set bedtime at least, and there's a nice, well-established routine, which and it can be quite hard to replicate at home sometimes. So the fourth form, I hope I get this right, should be in bed by ten, you know, for asleep by about quarter past. Now, how close to that 
happens every yeah. time, you know. Well, are but they then monitored? I mean, does anyone, I put a daughter in a different school, and the sixth form used to police the corridors yeah. um, in order to try, I mean, they were in bigger rooms than our people the fourth form appears to be here, but they did do that to ensure that things were quiet. We have prefects on duty still in houses every night, don't we? Jeremy, do you do a duty yeah, night? I'll be doing duty nights. I think that um, the ideal situation is that your pupils have worked hard during the day that they actually want to sleep, and I think that is something that can actually happen. Like, I mean, if I was to thinking, if I'm going to bed at uh, today, probably with D these days, I'm not really in the mood to talk to someone, I'm going to go to sleep, which is, I think, the best thing that would happen. I mean, I think you'll find that throughout the year, as the nights get darker, they'll be looking forward to sleeping. I don't think the issue of staying up late talking. Their phones have gone in some sort of yeah, ways, and yeah. I think you'll be fine with that. What time do you think, in reality, yes, a full form is getting to sleep? It's a uh, tough question from the deputy head, but I'll <laughs> uh, from when I was doing it, I would be starting to look to sleep at 10.30. About 10.30, I guess. Which is, I would be getting, yeah, I would be getting for 6.30, so I think, I mean, what I really, if you encourage them to have, like, one night say, just try going to sleep early, if they, like, the amount of, the better I felt and the, the next day I just couldn't believe how much better I felt like instead of just staying on my phone. If you, if you encourage them to just do it one night and see how they feel, I think they'll 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 catch on people. Losing the phones is key, mind, I must say. It's like drinking a coffee before we go to sleep. Um, yes. It's not just losing a phone, is it? It's a losing and everything. It's, it's got yeah, everything I, on it. Yeah, and I, and I, I love my phone as well. <laughs> it, it stays downstairs at the time it gets charged, and you know, I, I'm an adult. I control myself. To get it's a real challenge. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's a real challenge. Can, can I be so brave to say, hands up who, who bans phones from the bedroom for full form? Hands up who doesn't. Do you mind me doing this? It's a bit, so it's about 50 50. I think ish wasn't it? I think it was about fifty fifty. It would be it would be useful, I must say, because they're the if if we had you know the more united we can be parents, the easier this will be. Because it is a challenge. They will point out the friends that don't have it. But do you know what? I really believe that staying on your phone after about ten o'clock, you know, is is a, is a nightmare for getting to sleep. Even if they then put the phone down by quarter past, they're they 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 just drank a coffee. They have them, they, yeah, I mean, they've, it's got preps on it. What they often do when they start lessons is they hand them in, but they have them in between often. Before, before. This seemed to be maybe sensing just... Banning them all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been around this boy a number of times, actually. It's a real interesting debate on that. Just banning, the, banning it completely, I'm not convinced, and, and this might get into debate territory, is the right answer, because they are going to use their phones throughout their life. It's going to be an increasing part of their life. They've got to learn how to use them responsibly. And we're trying to, by putting rules in place of how you use it, rather than blanket banning them. Uh, I think some schools have gone down the blanket ban route. Um, we've decided not to. So this switch off the, I, I don't know anything about fans, so switch off the Wi-Fi or whatever it is during the day so that they can't all yeah, the, the YouTube and Yeah, you know, our, um, our uh, screens, that's not the right phrase, um, ban all of that. The trouble is if you've got 4G phones, that, 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 that's not so relevant. Really so there's only so much we can do, actually. Uh, Joe? So I said that if your child is with their phone in the class, it's taken away from me immediately. So they think that they could just be sitting in the back there on their phone. Like if they're using it, it will be out of their hands. So yeah. it's not a case of them just you know, in the back, in the corner. It's not an issue in class. Yeah. <laughs> And also, they do some good research on their phones in class sometimes. They might say, right, now you can have your phones. Look up the following things and base a lesson on it. It's not evil. There are some great things on it. But we've just got to help them learn how to use it responsibly and manage it, I think. The time is pressing. So maybe last one. Is that OK? Last question. What yes. In the evening, Helena, what is it in Haygate? Your house parents at the back, be careful. 
half an hour before you go to bed. Mr. Kim, does that sound about right? Yeah. Oh, blimey. Or two phones. Or two phones. Uh, you can see how hard it is now, can't you? It's not, it's not easy, is it? Um, I don't know. There are people possibly with two phones. And, and with, uh, yes? Well, I, I've got an app watch, I'm just saying. Um, there's no Facebook, there's no Instagram on those watches. Uh, it is literally just, it's very basic. Um, you're not going to get any social media on it. So, yeah, that's actually true. What's it called, sorry? Our Pact. Our Pact. Right. And it's something you can load up on the phones or other top of the system and then you can buy a Does it only work on eye products though, I take it? No. There's a Google one as well. Ooh. Right. I'm all, I'm, I'm, the bursar's nodding at me as well. We need to look into this, don't we? That might help. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I, I hadn't heard of that. Okay, folks, it's time to meet your tutor now. So. Uh, If I could just share you where your tutors are, those who are getting tutored by Andrew Howard, Anne-Marie Engelbrecht or Ed Walker, you're on this level through those doors. Uh, Andrew Howard's first on the right, Ed Walker's second on the right, Anne-Marie Engelbrecht is first on the left. And if you're tutored by Jonathan Turney, James, not you, your children, uh, tutored by James Rayner, Jonathan Turney, Rosanna, Rial Garcia, Audley London, Ahmed Musla, or Soma Singh, you're downstairs, back down where you had your drinks, um, and the names are on the doors. So, okay, thank you for coming, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.